Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to show you the corner to corner times four. This is a concept that I have developed. I don't know if it's already existed way back in the past but I did research and develop this beginning to frog and being able to figure things out in order to come up with the stitch work for this particular concept. So I'm calling it C2C times four. So here you see the concept and we're gonna start off in the center. So many people have emailed in over the years saying, can you do a corner to corner but do it as a square instead of just starting on one side of the corner to corner and growing yourself out in order to form it. So and in fact kind of creating a granny corner to corner. Uh, so basically you have four different quadrants. So you have one, two, three, and four and it's all being crocheted at the exact same time. So what you're looking at really is a huge a granny square just like you see. So what we're gonna do today is that I'm gonna show you how this concept is developed. There is a downfall to this particular concept. There is a consistency of two different rounds that need to work together in order to have it. And the only way that you can really see when that is happening is if you're using striping yarn. So let me show you that because I've actually done a full sample of an afghan and you can see it clearly in the photo and I'll so show that next. So on screen here is one color being used for the corner to corner times four. Well I did my particular sample in Karen Tea Cakes and what we have here this is a rectangle and another time I'll show you how to do it as a rectangle as well and uh, what it is is that we extend out the center just like so. So you'll notice if you follow the color follow the color all the way around you'll notice that it hits back here and then it goes back in the other direction. So I told you that there's two different rounds. So in the corner to corner times four you're gonna go around and stop and then around the other way and stop and around and stop and around and stop. So it's not a continuous round. I did try to develop the pattern so it was a continuous round. The problem is, is that the slip stitching was so obvious that it was pretty ugly. So what I decided to do is that you need to stop and go back in the other direction. So if you're using striping yarn you can see I came across with a darker color. I stopped and I came back. So on three sides so one, two and three the striping looks like it's all consistent with each other except for the very start of a round is that you can see that there's a clear difference. When you're in the smaller squares just like so you don't really notice it as much. It's when the afghan is getting much bigger. So I have this afghan. Let me show that to you on camera. So here's my afghan and what you can see it is corner to corner. So uh, what it is here is that instead of just working up on a diagonal you're working across as a straight row as you're going all the way across. So what happens in this particular concept is that you're going across and then eventually you will turn a corner and the corners are all looking very consistent. You have these gapping spaces in order to create the look that you need. I tried to do different ways of doing this corner and the only way I could figure out is that I need to have this gapping space so that it doesn't buckle. So this was my fourth attempt on trying this particular concept. So once you go all the way around like that you can see the color just kind of traced around and then in the very beginning of the round which I'll locate in just a moment you can see there's a difference of how it's starting. So what you can see here this is a starting round right here. So you can see that the blue came across and that we build up and then we came back in the other direction. So the blue never carried over to turn the corner. So on the very starts of these kind of concepts this to me is not a deal breaker because honestly the way I fold afghans and stuff on the back of a sofa and use it for this particular concept I have the beautiful look of three sides and the one side does have this inconsistent look. So it's really kind of cool. The problem with this is at the end which I, uh, which I also solved the problem for is that at the end because you're working in corner to corner you'll end up with the jagged edge. So up, down, up, down, up, down and all you just need to do in the very final round is that you need to square it off by just changing your stitch work at the very end. So my goal today is to get you to start it and show you how to do this and I'll show you how to do the border once we get there. This is a rectangular version which I will post at a later time but this is how it's done and again this is using uh, Karen Tea Cakes. So let's begin to start. You can use any size crochet hook and any size yarn as long as they complement each other. So I use for the Karen Tea Cakes an eight millimeter size L and right now I'm gonna use Bernat uh, Maker and I'm gonna be using that here but you can use Karen Simply Soft, Karen Tea uh, Cakes, all that kind of fun stuff as long as the hook matches each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin the center of my square and I want to chain a total of three. So one, two and three and I want to slip stitch to the beginning chain in order to form the ring. So slip stitch so just through and through and there is the center of my afghan right here. So let's begin to work on round number one. 
So in round number one we're gonna begin and it's gonna chain three. So one, two, and three and that counts as a double crochet and I want you to double crochet eleven more times or uh, eleven times into the center of this ring. So just count those out together. So one and two and trap that straggler into position just by putting it around the ring. This is three. This is four. This is five. Six. And this is seven. Eight. Nine. 10 and 11. So I put in 11 double crochets. So with the chaining of 3 in the very beginning plus the 11 there should be a total of 12. We need to count that out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So once you get your 12 in there just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain 3. And let's move on to round number 2. And because you have been burying in this straggler right now I want you to just go in and just get rid of it. It's out of your hair and out of your face. Let's move on to round number two. So let's begin round number two. How you get started is so important. So I'm gonna just take my time. So if I'm going too slow for you I'm sorry about that and if I'm going too fast just push the pause button just to keep up. So I'm going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three and that counts as a double crochet and I want to double crochet in the next stitch available to me. It's right here. Okay this this one here is part of this one. So just double crochet in the next stitch. And then I want you to do a total of a chaining of three. So one, two and three. And then in the next stitch here I want you to slip stitch. Slip. So this here looks like the side of the corner, right? And it is. So you slip stitch there and now we're now gonna start doing the repeat pattern. So we're gonna slip stitch in the next one and chain three. So one, two, three and then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so double crochet in the next one and then chain three. So one, two and three and then in the next stitch slip stitch down. So do you see that you got two sides now of your of your blanket going on? So let's uh, begin again. The next one is a slip stitch. So there's two slip stitches in a row. Chain three and then double crochet in the next and then chain three one, two, three and then slip stitch to the next one down. So the next one, uh, our next stitch. Okay, so you got three sides complete. Now let's do another one. So slip stitch again to the next one and then chain three. One, two, three, double crochet in the next one and then chain three, one, two, three and then slip stitch into the next one. So we're now here at the bottom. We're just about to finish round number two but we're not quite done. So what we want to do is that we want to slip stitch into the next one. Okay, that stitch is already technically done and then we're gonna slip stitch twice into the next chain. Okay, because you got chains and slip stitch right into the space of the chain three. And that's how you conclude then this round. So technically you would have stopped normally right here but you need to continue a little bit further because now we're gonna turn our work and begin row num or round number three. So round number three and four that I'm about to start here is a repeat. So it doesn't matter how big you make this, it's just a repeat. So now you're going to chain up three. So one, two and three and look at the angle that I'm holding this at. I'm not holding it up like this. I'm holding it on an angle. And around the same 
ones that I just slip stitched up. So we, when we came across we slip stitched up this one here and then we turned to work and began. So we chained up three and I want to double crochet twice around that same chain. So one and two. Okay, so now we're gonna continue then and we're going to slip stitch around the next chain three gapping space right here. So slip stitch and because this is a corner we need to grow up the corner as what you see it. So to grow it up you're going to chain three, you are going to double crochet in the next double crochet and then chain three to come back down. So one, two, three and slip stitch into this chain three space right there and then begin. So notice how I'm just kind of turning. So now I'm gonna begin the next uh, length here. So the only difference as we go along is that these corners get further and further apart from each other. So we're gonna chain up three and you're gonna put in two double crochets into the chain three space that we, where you just slip stitched. And then once you get here you're going to slip stitch to the next chain three which just happens to be the next corner. So slip it first and then build that corner out. So chain three, double crochet into the next double crochet. Okay, chain three to come back down and slip stitch around the next space down here. Okay, and then continue along. So chain three and then put in two double crochets around that same one you just slipped around. and then you're coming into the next corner here. So just slip it to the first chain three space and then chain up three to build up and then double crochet in the next one and then chain three to come back down and slip stitch. And you're continuing to do that all the way around. Just watch where you started. Can you see where you started? You started right here. So you want to, sometimes it's just easier to put a slip uh, like a stitch marker to know where you stopped and started just in the very beginning. So chain up three, two double crochets around the same space okay slip stitch and we're not done. We still have the final corner to do so chain up three and this is how you finish this one. So you du double crochet in the next one and now you need to double crochet into this chain three space. That's how you finish row, no, uh, the, this, uh, the round number three. So when you finish you have to put two double crochets in a row and then you're ready to go up then for the next round which is round number four. So to begin round number four you're gonna turn your work and you go back in the other direction. So this here, this, this would be where that line would create if you're doing any kind of striping yarn. So we turned our work and we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and we're gonna double crochet in the next double crochet. This is the corner and then you're going to chain three to come back down the corner. So one, two and three and come into the chain three space. So you will notice here is that this corner is much bigger than the other corners so when you come around you're going to finish right here. So we're gonna continue then. As, so what's gonna happen is that there's more distance between the corners. So between the corners you're just chaining three and putting in two double crochets into the chain three space. And these will lean over on their sides. Okay. So then what you have to just do is then slip stitch it like it's just a regular corner to corner. Slip stitch it in the space between the chain three and the double crochets and then chain three and put in two more double crochets there. You're gonna start seeing the corner to corner concept coming out alive in each quadrant. So then here is the corner. So you slip stitch it chain up three and double crochet in the next double crochet and then chain three to come back down. So one, two, three and slip stitch it to the chain three. 
and then turn the project. So you can see that the corners are gonna look consistent like a ladder as they build out. So you're gonna chain up three and double crochet twice into that same chain three space and then it treat it like a regular corner to corner. So these boxes are leaning over, just go into the space between the chain three and the two double crochets, slip stitch it and then chain three and then building up. So it, it really kind of helps to know how to do corner to corner with this concept as you're growing it. So we're hitting the next corner already, so just slip stitch it first and then we're going to continue. So we're on the corner and we're gonna just chain up three to build it out. You're gonna double crochet in the next double crochet to keep it consistent and then chain three to come back down. One, two, three and then slip stitch into the chain three space. So just continuing to turn, just chain up three and go right into the same space for two more double crochets. And then just treat it like a regular corner to corner. So go right in between the two double crochets in the chain three space with a slip stitch, chain up three and then double crochet twice. So basically it's like a corner to corner every time you complete a row or a round there will get more and more boxes in between the corners. So now you're hitting another corner so slip stitch it, chain up three, double crochet in the next one and then chain three to come back down to the next chain three space here and then turn your square. So chain up three two double crochets into the same one and work your way across. So right where we, I'm holding right here is where we had started. So we're just gonna go into the space like it's a regular corner to corner and chain up three and then we're going to just put in two double crochets. So to finish off round number four, all we just need to do is that you just join it to the beginning here. So don't join it up at the top, join it right here. Okay, so just join it with a slip stitch and then what I need you to do is that I need you to slip twice up into this chain. So just move up the chain, so slip and slip and go right into this gapping space and slip. And that's how you finish off round number four. So now you're gonna be completely ready to where you need to go in order to start round number three again. So it's just three and four. So let's turn our work and begin round number three once again. So to begin round number three it's just gonna be a difference is that the corners are further apart from each other as you can see and then the corner to corners lay in the in between them. So to begin we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and you're going to slip stitch exactly where you just did that slip stitch and coming up that chain. So just uh, double crochet twice and treat the rest of the in between the corner like a C to C. So just coming in between the two double crochets and the chain three, just slip it and then chain three coming into that chain two, uh, three space again and you just keep treating it like a regular corner to corner going across. And then eventually you're gonna hit a corner which is right here. So you're gonna slip it first and then chain up three you're going to double crochet into the next double crochet and then chain three. One, two, three and then come back down and slip stitch it in this gap and turn the project. So let's begin. So another side, so chain up three and in the same space here you're going to put two more double crochet and treat the remaining of the side like it's a regular corner to corner. So go into the space between the two double crochets. Sorry, uh, the space so there's a chain three and then two double crochets so go in between there. So chain three and then put two more double crochets into that same spot. So slip it, chain up three and two more double crochets into the same spot. And then what we have here is that here's your corner. So slips it and then build it up. So chain three, 
double crochet into the next that keeps your corners consistent and then I want you then to um, chain up three. So one, two, three and then come back down into the next space down here. So now we just turn our work and continue along. So chain up three and in the same space you're putting in two double crochet and then coming into the next one just treat it like a regular corner to corner. So really you only have to pay attention to the corners like the actual corner to cor uh, corner itself because in between the corners it's just pretty much C to C and then you can look up and watch TV as you're working your way across. So eventually you'll hit your next corner so you slip it first, chain up three and then double crochet back in to the next one and then chain three to come back down Turn your work, chain up three, two double crochet into the same one. Okay, and then just treat it like corner to corner. So the only difference really of, of a corner to corner there is three double crochets. Um, I'm only suggesting two. Um, I tried three and it, it caused the work to buckle. So just treat it like a regular corner to corner but with just two double crochets into the spaces and not three. and eventually I have started here. So I'm gonna finish off this corner. So I'm gonna slip it first, chain up three and then I'm gonna double crochet into the next one and then when I'm finishing around number three I double crochet into the next space and then therefore I'm ready to go then for round number four again. So to start round number four all I'm just going to do is turn the work and build out this corner. So just chain up three and double crochet into the next one and come back in the other direction and then chain three to come back down to the space and then turn the project slightly and then begin. So you're just gonna do corner to corner. So you see you had one box here, you had two boxes in this round, you had three boxes. This time it will be four. So chain up three to begin again down the side and then just keep treating it like corner to corner. So chain three and two double crochets into the spaces and then keep moving along and eventually you'll hit an, another corner. So as I mentioned it took me four times to to get the stitch counts right for these. So slip it and then you are going to then build it this corner. So chain up three and then double crochet and then chain three to come back down and then begin again. So you just keep on going all the way around. So I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'm gonna show you how to finish these off so that you can have a nice flat border instead of the jagged edge that I talked about in the beginning of today's tutorial. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So as I come all the way back around number four I'm just finishing off the last time it's like a C to C before I hit the corner and then remember to finish the corner you are going to and this is round number four so remember three and four are just slightly different so you're gonna attach it here. Okay so not up here attach it here. So just a slip stitch and then I want you to slip stitch yourself all the way up until you get to the top of that. So slip stitch twice so one and then two and then go right into the space right here. So you're just gonna continue to repeat and you can kinda see that it's happening now and now I'm gonna show you how to do the border in order to bring consistency. So let's uh, talk about that. So once you're ready for a border you need to finish off finishing off round number four. So don't uh, start this if you're on round number three make sure you finished round number four which I just have. So we're now going to start filling in these spaces so that we have a nice flat edge because if you like it like this great, great leave it. If you don't then you can finish it. So to start a border you're not gonna turn your work first. So we're not gonna turn and go back in the other direction.
So to start the border you're gonna finish off round number four. So make sure you do finish off round number four before you continue. So to start the border you're just gonna turn your work and go in the other direction so that you have consistency. So the goal is is to fill in these these uh, dinosaur bumps so that it becomes flat. So in order to do so is that we have to be consistent about it. So how we have do that is that we chain up three. So one, two, three and the next stitch that we're gonna put in here into this chain, this chain three space is going to be a half double crochet and then the next one into the space is gonna be a single crochet and all you're going to do then is just join it So I've now just finished round number four and I'm gonna show you how to do a border. So if you're starting a border you need to finish off doing round number four. Okay, so do three, four, three, four all the way until you get to, to the decision factor that you wanna do it. So once you finish round number four you're gonna turn your work. So to begin this particular concept we need to fill in the space so that these humps are gone. So all we just need to do is that we're going to just um, start and we're going to chain up once and leave it. In the space you're going to do a half double crochet and then in the space again you're going to put in a double crochet and then you're going to slip stitch it to the next uh, space between the double crochets and the chain three and see that just made it flat. So to get begin again you are going to start off in chain one you're going to do the next one is a half double crochet and then the next one is gonna be a full double crochet. So the chain one is acting like a single crochet just so you know and then you're gonna come into the space like this. See, you're making it flat. So chain one, you're going to do a half, then a double and then slip stitch it. See, you're making it flat. So chain one, half, double and slip and do that all the way across. So we're gonna hit a corner shortly. So we're gonna chain one, half, double crochet next, space, the same space, double crochet in the same space and then slip it and what I would do if I were you is that I would just slip the next two. So slip into the next double crochet and slip into the next chain three space and then turn your work. So to begin the other side chain up one and then you are going to half, you're going to double and slip. So what this did is that it made it pretty much flat and then it turns as a nice flat edge here and then you're ready to go. So, so chain up one, you're going to half double, you're going to double and then you're going to slip. So continue to do that all the way around. So just chain up one, half double, double and slip all the way around. And then once you get to the corner just once you get there slip it, slip it and then slip it and then begin the next side. So I'll see you at the end of this rotation. Okay when you get all the way back around you're still treating it um, just like what you already know and then you eventually hit back at the main corner where you had started with. So you can tell you started here. So you're gonna slip stitch it okay and then slip stitch into the top of the next double crochet and just slip stitch it to the first chain one space. Okay and therefore you're done. So just take your yarn here and just wanna weave in the ends as you're going. So um, just pull through and you might wanna throw it onto a darning needle in order to hide it completely. Um, it's always best to do that. It just, it just is uh, a, best, a better way to keeping it from falling out. So just coming back in the opposite direction just glide it up underneath the stitch work. This kind of yarn is more cordy so I just wanna just kinda get it between the cords. So once and then in the other direction for twice. And then 
finally go in the other direction a third time. And you might wanna do that if you have more than one uh, area that you had to change your yarns if you made a bigger afghan and etc. So just going back and forth three times just kind of restretching things back out and then you can safely just trim that right down into the project and therefore you'll never see it. So this is how you do the corner to corner times four. You can see that there's a corner to corner here, 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 and here and then it's just joined and you're doing this as a square instead of individuals just like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.